A spectre is haunting the world. The livelihoods of nearly a billion people could be at risk. Worldwide, farmlands nearly the size of the United States could turn into a dust bowl. Desertification is on the march. Countries are consuming too much water. The land is being overburdened by too many people, too much livestock, and too many harvests. 2006 is the UN's International Year of Desertification. Think desertification and you think of dry places getting drier. But bad management can reduce even the richest, wettest forest to a desert. This episode of Villages on the Front Line comes from Costa Rica and the wider Caribbean. Having cleared more than 60% of its original forest, Costa Rica in tropical Central America is experimenting with new methods to preserve the rest. But is it in time? Or could it end up in the same dire environmental straits as its Caribbean neighbor, Haiti? To find out, we enlisted the expert guidance of leading Costa Rican biologist, Carlos Alberto Lopez Herrera. In our country, we have areas that have been unfortunately very depleted, especially the mountains here to the south, where you can see the process of erosion, the process of loss of wildlife, and to a certain extent, you would call it desertification, because when you lose the forest cover, what you lose also is many other factors. You lose the biodiversity, of course, you lose water, you lose soil. But how can desertification be happening in a country with an average rainfall of 250 centimeters a year? In fact, when trees are removed, the rain itself becomes part of the problem. Intact forests on steep slopes shield the soil against direct impact by tropical downpours. Slowed and dispersed, the rainwater can penetrate the soil, feed the vegetation and replenish the groundwater. If a hillside is laid bare, the water no longer penetrates the surface and the groundwater is not replenished. The role of forests in maintaining healthy soils and watersheds has rarely figured in assessments of a country's wealth. Even as recently as 1989, Costa Rica's government backed a policy of clearing forest for farmland. The only significant reason for deforestation in Costa Rica is agricultural land. People have always seen the forest as a place where they cannot produce. It doesn't yield anything for them. <clears throat> so in our country, because of policies that had to do with the development of our economy, people were encouraged to open up the forest, clear it, improve it, as they say. From the 1940s onward, Vast swathes of Costa Rica's forest were cleared for cattle ranches and for pineapple and banana plantations. The destruction continued apace until the late 80s, at the rate of around 50,000 hectares per year, according to UNEP. But in the 1970s, the government took action to protect some areas of outstanding natural wealth. A key figure in the new conservation movement was Mario Boza. Being one of the few witnesses of the whole process of conservation in Costa Rica, what would you have to say about the beginning of this? Yeah, well, we started in 1970, 36 years ago, uh, after the approval of the first uh, forest law. We had nothing, just, just the law, uh, and just a small office at the Ministry of Agriculture at that time. And, and the task was to create a park system in the country. Uh, can you imagine the magnitude of the task and with zero uh, possibilities because no personnel, no funds, anything. Helped by grants from the newly formed World Wildlife Fund, Boza's fledgling parks department expanded into an effective force for conservation. But he believes there is still much to be done if the spectre of desertification is to be banished. I always say that we are at present halfway, halfway uh, between mm, the beginning and between the goal. So we have the parks, 
The parks and uh, equivalent reserves cover uh, about 16.3% um, of, the, of the country. Probably what we will need in the near future is uh, about 20%, something like that, in, in public conservation, plus probably another 5% in, in private conservation. That is very, it's becoming very important at this time. Although we may have more land in biological corridors and in, in watersheds, uh, watersheds protected by municipalities or by private owners just to produce water and to charge, to receive economic benefits by the water produced. We all uh, know that water uh, will be a key element in the development of any country. Uh, no matter if, if it rains a lot, water could be a serious problem in, in the very near future. So we have to guarantee the protection of the watersheds. So, through people like Mario Bosa, relatively early on, the authorities in my country recognized the economic value of watersheds left intact to supply water, not only for consumption in our homes, factories and farms, but also as a source of power. Via hydroelectric dams like this one, water is also the source of around 80% of the country's electricity. Jose Benavides is the manager of one of the country's private hydroelectric dams. If we permit or if we cut the trees or the forests down, we will have a lot of problems. The first one is the rain the intensity will come down, so the average water flow will come down as well. And the production, the plant production, is also going, going down. The forest surrounding Jose's plant is mainly in the hands of private landowners who receive government subsidies to keep their trees. The Don Pedro plant contributes a quarter of these subsidies. We know that we receive water for uh, our production and we need to do something to keep that source. If we pay a certain amount, we encourage people to help us keeping the same amount of water in the river. 